Good morning students of 7th standard. Today I will be taking classes for the part 2 of unit 1 in English, grammar and supplementary on Monday morning. First let us see prefix or suffix. Prefix are the words that are added before any particular word. Suffix are the words that are added after a particular word. See a list of prefix and suffix is given and some options are given. We will have to fill up in, from the options. Child. It can be filled with hood. So it is childhood. Next is noon. We can fill it with after and it becomes afternoon. Next is relation. We can fill it with ship, relationship. Happy. Unhappy. Danger. Dangerous. Wonder, wonderful, count, countless, patient, impatient, excite, excitement, perfect and perfection. Now, next, let's move on to match the following and write them in column C. It's given a cup full of, what can be the correct option? Coffee, yeah, a cup full of coffee. A bag full of silver. A spoon full of sugar. A pocket full of money. Now to the section G. Fill in the blanks with suitable words from the box. The thieves came out of the house with a dash of gold and silver. Bag full. My mother throws a dash of grains for the parrots every day. Hand full. He took a dash of the cake. Mouthful. Ram takes a dash of soup before food. Cupful. John added a dash of sugar to the lemon juice. Spoonful. The child was happy with this dash of chocolates. Pocketful. Now let's move on to the language checkpoint. Like what we should not say and what we should say. See, let's see the first one. She is my cousin sister and he is my cousin brother. But this is a wrong sentence. We must say it as they are my cousins. Because the word cousin usually refers to both male and female. The next let us say I have two daughter-in-laws. It is the correct it is wrong. The correct option is I have two daughters-in-law. Yes is added to the first daughter to form the plural. Next, the three boys went for bathing or swimming in the sea. Now you have to read the passage and tick the correct answers. The correct answer is swim. They watched the waves or dolphins tumbling towards the shore. Waves. The gulls were flying over the sea or oyster catchers. Oyster catchers. When the sea was calm or rough, they would skim stones. Calm. 26 or 36 was Gopal's record. 26. Now next exercise. Talk about yourself using the clothes given. You may start like this. When I was a little boy, I had a red bicycle. On the first day of the school, generally what do we do on the first day of the school? I was crying. As a child, I spent my free time playing games. I used to admire my teacher. You can even say my father, my mother, anything of your choice. Last year, at this time, I was writing my exams. Or you can say I was in my grandmother's house. Now, I really enjoy my new school. When I was in Chennai, I have never visited the Marina Beach. Now, let us move on to another section of the grammar, determiners. Determiners are words that are used before a noun. A determiner describes the noun and functions like an adjective. So, look at the first picture. There are many flowers in the bunch. Only a few are fresh. There are some biscuits in the plate. Are there any mangoes in the basket? No, there aren't, but there are some guavas. So, here, many, few, any, some. They act as determiners, determining either the quantity of 
whatever we are asking. Now, tick the correct option. There are dash apples in the baskets. Look at the basket. Yeah, there are many apples. You can't write much apples. So, there are many apples in the basket. Only dash are green. Only few are green. There isn't dash traffic on Sundays. Look at the picture. There isn't much traffic on Sundays. There isn't dash water in the glass. Any water in the glass. Because there is no water in the glass. There aren't dash eggs in the basket. Are there any eggs in the basket? No. So we, we should write there aren't any eggs in the basket. But there are dash near it. Near the basket. Do you find some eggs? Yeah. So we write but there are a few eggs near it. Next section K. Fill in the blanks with some, any, much or many. Some options can be used more than once. There is dash coffee left in the pot. Do you want? There is some coffee left in the pot. Do you have dash coins with you? I need some. Do you have any coins with you? She asked me for some magazines, but I could not find any. I can't carry the luggage dash more, any more. I need dash help, some help. There are dash places to visit, many places to visit, but we don't have dash time to visit them, much time to visit them. Next, we move on to the option writing. Describe Kandan's family in about 60 words using the pictures and clues given. One is already done for you. The remaining should be done by you as an assignment looking at the picture given to you in the YouTube video. So, you look at the first picture. Kandan's grandfather is thin and tall. He is 70 years old. He is affectionate. So, with the hints given below, they have written these words about Kandan's grandfather. Similarly, look at the other pictures and do the same as an assignment. Now, let us do some more writing exercises. This is, now we are going to practice writing a message. Read the telephonic conversation between Muller and Selvi. Muller needs to leave a message for her father. See, let's see the telephonic conversation. Muller, hello, my name is Muller. Could I talk to Mr. Rao, please? I am his colleague, Mr. Vishwanath's daughter. Selvi, I am sorry, my father is out for his morning work. Do you want to leave a message for him? Muller then replies, Yes, please. My father had to leave for Madurai all of a sudden since my grandfather is ill. So he won't be able to come for work for a few days. It would be really nice if your father could inform the office. Selvi, don't worry. I'll leave the message for my father. Muller then says, Thanks a lot. And Selvi says, You're welcome. This is the message that Selvi left to her father the previous day. Write a message based on a conversation with Muller. See, she has written the date. Time is 4.30 p.m. Dear Papa, I have my music class at 5 p.m. So, I am leaving now. I have prepared tea and samosa and kept it in the kitchen. Please come and pick me up at 7 p.m. So, a similar message has to be given by Muller to her father. So, let's write the message. First, you write the date. Then on the right side, you write the time. Let us now write the message. Dear Papa, your colleague, Mr. Rao, will inform in your office that you will not be able to come for work for a few days. How is Grandpa? Kindly take care of him. Your dear daughter, Muller. Next, we move on to a creative writing. Describe the picture in 50 words and give suitable title. Make use of the words given below. This is an assignment for you. You have to use the hints given here, give a title and write 50 words about the picture. Whatever you feel like, please write and make it an assignment and submit. Next, we may move on to the section. Here are some words that express feelings. Read the situations and write the suitable one in the blanks. Your mom made your favorite dinner. How do you express that feeling? You feel? Yes, joyous. You lost your geometry box and someone returns it to you. How do you feel? We feel thankful. You are waiting for your exam results. When you wait, you feel very? Yes, anxious. It is very late at night and your father hasn't returned from the office. How do you feel? We feel worried. You have won the first prize 
in the essay writing con competition. How do you feel? We feel very proud. The first day at school, how do we feel? Excited. You find it tough to learn a new language. How do you feel then? We feel dejected. Now let us move on to the supplementary section on Monday morning. Adapted from Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. Let me give you a small summary. On Monday morning, Tom Sawyer was miserable that he had his Monday's blues as usual. He wished he was sick so he could stay home from school. But he was not sick. He felt he had a mild stomachache. But that too was not there anymore. Suddenly he discovered one of his front teeth was loose. He was about to groan. But then the thought of his aunt were pulling his tooth and that pain made him stop his idea. Tom had earlier known that an injured toe can keep one in bed for even three weeks. So he lifted his toe, sore toe up. Tom lifted his sore toe up and started to grow loudly in imaginary pain. To wake up his brother Sid Sawyer who was sleeping beside him. With his groaning, finally Sid woke thinking Tom was really suffering for hours. Sid was upset with Tom's condition who started to confess his sins as if he was about to die. Sid flew down to call Aunt Polly quickly to save him and Aunt Polly hurried upstairs trembling. Soon she understood Tom was pretending of dying of sore toe. So Tom now told it was awful aching of loose tooth. When Aunt Polly got ready to pull his tooth with a silk thread and a chunk of fire, Tom panicked and confessed that it doesn't hurt him anymore and he would go to school and not for fishing. Old Aunt Polly loved mischievous Tom. Though he tries to break her heart often, she pulled the tooth in a crude way and relieved his toothache by using a silk thread as a loop tying it to the bedside. Then she caught hold of the chunk of fire and suddenly pushed it almost to the boy's face. Now we have learnt a small snippet from The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. Now let us move on to the glossary section. Panting, breathing quickly, exertions, effort, aggravated, irritated, snort, a cry made to show unhappiness, anxiously, tensely, loop, curve. Children, you must study these glossaries. It will be asked as choose the correct answer. Now to the practice section. Name the speaker. Some lines will be given from the lesson. You will have to say who the speaker is. No, never mind. It will be over by and by and maybe don't call anybody. These words were spoken by Tom Sawyer. It makes my flesh crawl to hear you. What is the matter? These were spoken by Sid. Your tooth indeed. What's the matter with your tooth? These were spoken by Aunt Polly. Write true or false against each statement. Tom enjoyed Monday mornings as he had to go to school. False. Tom's first groan woke up Sid from his sound sleep. False. Tom wanted to give his dog with one eye to the new girl who had come to town. False. Aunt Polly sent Sid to fetch the dentist. False. Now let's move on to the next exercise. C. Read the following passage and answer the question. Tom lay thinking. Presently it occurred to him that he wished he was sick. Then he could stay home from school. He examined himself. He found no symptoms of sickness and he investigated again. This time he felt he had a stomachache but it soon grew feeble and presently died wholly away. He reflected further. Why did Tom wish that he was sick? Tom wished he was sick so that he could stay home and not go to school. What was the result of Tom's self-examination? Tom found no symptoms of sickness after he self-examined himself. What did he detect? Tom detected that he had a stomachache. To section number E. Choose the correct answer. Tom pretended his toe was dying in order to dash. Miss school. Aunt Polly pulled Tom's tooth out with a dash, a piece of thread. Tom was miserable on Monday morning because he hated going to the school. Now let us go to step to success. Exercise number H. Give a relationship term 
for the close given siblings who are siblings a brother or a sister kith and kin kith and kin means friends or relatives a chip of the old block that is similar to father or mother two peas in a pod meaning twins similar in appearance bread winner the family member who earns money to support the family four fathers and ancestors of one's family now arrange the words in according to their degrees of meaning eager thrilled excited we write excited because it is of a lesser degree than thrilled than eager old aged senior here the order becomes senior old aged small tiny minute here the order is small tiny minute worried panicked anxious here it becomes anxious worried and panic now let us do some thinking and answering think and answer x and y are parents to z but z is not the son of x then what is z to x z is daughter to x Meera's brother is the father of Akash. Then how is Akash related to Meera? Aunt. She becomes the aunt. With this, we have come to the end of the lesson. After this, you will be given a PPT, a PowerPoint on question and answers. Children, please do your sub assignments and submit them at the correct day and time. Stay home, stay safe, stay learnt. Bye-bye.